Uh, one of your themes in your speech is virtue and wisdom. Uh, we all agree that virtue is the mark of a good person. In reality, however, cost, virtue may be costly, and people may have little desire for it. Those who you have sacrificed a great deal in trying to live a life of virtue and wisdom. Can you please say something to those of us who hesitate about virtue, who have yet to commit to a life of virtue? Please. It, it, it would sound very arrogant if I was to say that I was full of wisdom and virtue. So I would like to say very simply that uh, what I've always tried to do is to uh, to develop a sense of responsibility, to try to fulfill my duties as best as possible. And that, for me, is the biggest virtue of which I'm capable. I'm not sure whether I'm virtuous in the sense in which other people think of virtue, but I certainly put a lot of importance on duty, and I try to fulfill my duty as far as possible, and I try to acquire as much knowledge as I think it is necessary for me to carry out my duties. So in that sense, uh, what I have done is to try to live with a clear conscience. And that is the biggest, best freedom in the world. My question to you is, during the many years of seclusion and isolation, how do you keep your faith and maintain a clear mind. What would be your advice to our young generation when going through hardship in life? Uh, I'm going to mention a, wo a, a word which is perhaps not fashionable anymore, but it is very important. Discipline. That's how I managed to go through these years of isolation. I led a very disciplined life. And uh, that's how I managed to keep my faith. Young people these days perhaps do not put such a value on discipline, but if they only knew how much it would help them in times of trouble, then I think they would learn to value discipline a lot more than they do now. The Chinese Nobel Prize winner Liu Xiaobo is still in prison in China. As a, as, as a um, fellow uh, Nobel laureate, what message do you have for Liu Xiaobo and for other Chinese distance who are in similar situations? And also, if you do get a chance to talk to Chinese leaders, I'm wondering um, what would you say to them? Thank you. First of all, my message to all those who are in prison in some way or the other for their beliefs, I would like to say to them, you must keep faith with yourself. That is the most important thing. If you cannot keep faith with yourself, you will not be able to lead a full and peaceful life, and a life of inner peace. So you have to keep faith with yourself. And my message to the Chinese leaders would be very simple. China is a great country. The Chinese people are a great people with a marvelous and long history behind them. You can afford to take new steps. You can afford to be daring. You can afford to allow room for all kinds of opinions. So that is my simple message. You are a greater people than you think you are. So please open up your greatness to everybody else. My question to you is, is there anything that you have done in the political world between 1988 and 2010 that you regret doing? Thank you. Politically? No, I don't think I've done anything terrible politically. The only thing I can say is that perhaps we should have tried to get democracy quicker, but we've done our best. And apart from that, uh, I don't think we've done anything really bad politically. My question for you is one from the heart. What makes you happy? 
What makes me happy? Very small things make me happy. I've learned to be happy with small things, such as, for example, the ability to be able to go, back, go to bed early one day. I think to myself, ha, huh, I'm going to go to bed early today, and that makes me happy. I think this is one of the things you have to learn if you live the kind of life that I do. You have to learn to be happy with little things and to treasure them as part of life. My question for you is after working with different NGOs back in the United States uh, with Burmese refugees, what message would you give to refugees living overseas uh, that are experiencing hardships on a daily basis and uh, have expressed wanting to even be back in the refugee camps where their basic needs are net met? And um, what, what advice would you give to them to remain hopeful and peaceful instead of resorting to violent, violence uh, in order to meet their needs? I think they have to learn to rise to the challenges that, that life throws at them. Their life in the refugee camps was hard. Now their life in their new country is hard in a different way. They've simply got to learn to cope with it. I know that it's not uh, <coughs> done as easily as is said, but I'm sure they have many organizations and many individuals who are helping them with, to cope with the situation. Uh, I always think that challenges are interesting and they are there to help you to become a stronger person. Perhaps the experiences they have gone through have made them uh, more fearful of facing what is new and strange. So we have to teach them to free themselves from their fears. This is one of the, the main themes of our struggle, to free ourselves from our fears. Well, you are the icon of Burma. What is your succession plan? Uh, how are you, are you, what is your strategy in finding your successor or your successors who become icons of Burma for the cause and movement that you are trying to achieve? Well, first of all, I've never been happy about the word icon. You know, I, I think of a, a very still image, just been there doing nothing at all. And in my opinion, I've worked very, very hard. And so what I want to do is to bring up younger leaders who also work very, very hard and who are brave enough to face new challenges. What we want to do is to teach them to cope with whatever life throws at them. And this is the way in which they can learn to be leaders. Uh, what is your advice to the people who are fighting for democracy for a long time in Hong Kong or in China or even other places all over the world? Thank you. I think the first thing is, that, is something that they've got to ask themselves, themselves. Why are they fighting for democracy? What are their beliefs? And if you're very clear about what your beliefs are, then you can go on fighting and you can always find new ways of carrying on the fight. But if you don't know why you're doing what you're doing, then you cannot be effective. So it's a matter of not just of, of faith, but as of also of uh, thought. You've got to think out your philosophy and you've got to think out your tactics and strategies very carefully.